Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluckish channel. The global standards for surface combatant ships are destroyers and an almost diminishing group of frigates. Modern destroyers are fast, maneuverable, long-endurance warships intended to escort larger vessels or battle groups and defend them against powerful short-range attackers. Carrying tons of weaponry, modern destroyers are capable of speeds more than 30 knots and can smoothly maneuver in less than one minute. Destroyers are relatively fast. This is very important in evasive maneuvers, a reflex action to an enemy's invasion a collision, or an armored attack to avoid damage to the ship. <laughs> the common basic evasion method is maneuvering. Normally, numerous watchstanders in the Combat Center, or CIC, of the ship are responsible for manipulating the rudder tracking systems and keeping the ship on its desired course. With modern technology, ships are less dependent on watchstanders. So how are evasive maneuvers done on destroyers? As soon as a ship senses an attack and needs to maneuver towards the right, it turns the rudder right, or starboard side, to its maximum angle, 35 degrees, and sometimes a little lesser. Initially, the ship tends to move towards the port side, then it surrenders to the starboard side. It first makes a 90-degree turn towards starboard, then a complete 180-degree turn, and eventually, it follows a circular trajectory as all forces on the rudder and the hydrodynamics of the seawater balance. Two, one. Orange is back full. Orange is back full, aye. If the ship turns right, the rudder needs to move to the right, and vice versa. Even though this might seem very simple, the external forces from the wind and the water complicate this process. In the U.S., captains need to undergo a maneuver captain's career course to perform any maneuvers. Even more impressive is the evasion tactics of an aircraft carrier that is simply more superior. The carrier is constantly moving to avoid being targeted by attack ships. Within 30 minutes, it has maneuvered anywhere within a 700 square mile radius. Over 90 minutes, the area grows to 6,000 square miles it will be harder for the adversaries to catch on, and the aircraft carrier is always surrounded by the carrier strike group, covering the carrier from all angles, from the air down to below the sea surface. Destroyers and frigates are designed for quick maneuverability to protect against air, surface, or underwater threats. Similarities between destroyers and frigates have led to countries using the words interchangeably. They are classified as light ships relative to other warships. On the other hand, almost every navy owns a frigate. 
During the end of the 20th century, the U.S. Navy found itself on the fence when the Cold War had ended, with a huge fleet of warships left missionless. Financially, it was smarter to invest in cheaper, futuristic, agile, stealthy vessels capable of defeating threats and the literals. Consequently, it was decided to make two types of ships at once. The Independence Literal Combat Ship, or LCS, by General Dynamics and Hostel, and Freedom LCS, a product of Lockheed Martin, Finn Cantieri, and MarineNet Marine Corporations. The Independence LCS is unlike any ship. It has a trimaran structure, a ship with three parallel hulls connected at the top. The ship slides on water. Yeah, that's it, thank you. Oh, okay, yeah. The Independence has a landing pad operating several aircraft at once and a hangar that can accommodate a pair of helicopters or drones. All onboard functions are automated by a control complex sitting in the center of the main deck. The estimated cost of the independence was $200 million, exceeding this by an astonishing $500 million in operation. The Freedom LCS, on the other hand, is a resilient, flexible warship designed to affordably include advanced sensors and cutting-edge cyber systems. It looks like a regular ship with a gun in the front and a helipad. So what does the life of the people on light warships, like LCS, look like? Interestingly, the LCS is reconfigurable, and missions are customizable. The ship can be an anti-mine ship, finding underwater mines, and on another day, a warship. Life on a light warship, like the LCS, is different from life on normal ships. This ship is used to a lot of rolling. Even breakfast can get tricky to eat on a table without it flying. Everyone is busy the entire day, with more work, less sleep. The crew is on standby, five hours of continuous watching, and another 10 hours to attend meetings, training, or get some sleep. Despite the tiring nature of life on the ship, there is always something new to learn. Smaller in numbers compared to operations on larger vessels, the crew on the LCS have a stronger camaraderie and look out for each other. Next course is 312 degrees true. Nearest hazard navigation. They follow a blue and gold rotation concept, where the crew is divided into two, each doing a rotation different from the other, achieving combat system certification and training. In terms of training, the crew on the LCS are trained to do any assigned task and accomplish any mission. For example, the crew can bear the burden of deployments, maintenance of the ship, looking after water jets, a first of its kind on this ship, as well as being a platform to serve as a medical base. Away from families, the crew has their ups and downs, but they also have each other's back.
Unfortunately, this year marks the last for frigates for the U.S. Navy. Instead, destroyers will continue to dominate the fleet. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.